let's talk about automating investments on interactive brokers. Now, a platform a lot of people, myself included, are recommending because it's really solid. You know your money is going to be safe over there. And a lot of other benefits. I made a number of videos about the platform in the past. You can check it out afterwards. But long story short, it's a great platform to start your investing journey or if you already started another broker to really level up. So I definitely use it myself and can really recommend them. However, it's definitely not the most user-friendly platform, right? If you watch some videos online or maybe played around with it yourself, it is a bit cumbersome to figure out. And finally enough, after years of talking to my wife about finally starting to use interactive brokers, she had been investing for a while, but using other brokers in the past, she finally decided to open up her account. And oh my God, I heard all the complaints, how difficult it was, and the platform is not really user-friendly compared to some of the other brokers, which granted is in a way true. They have been improving, but yeah, it's still not the easiest to use. However, there is a way how you can actually mitigate that. If you still want to use the platform and benefit from all the great offers, then there is a way how you can basically automate your investments. And that way you set it and forget it and you don't have to log in and look at all these screens and dashboards. You just set it up and it will be investing on your behalf, which I think apart from avoiding the interface and complexities of navigating the platform, actually also defeats another big, big challenge that I see with a lot of investors is the emotional side of investing, right? They panic when the market goes down, they start selling, or if the market goes up a lot, they stay on the sidelines and don't invest at all because they think things are too expensive. And you wanna take out the emotion, you want a dollar cost average over time, every single week, every single month, whatever works best for you, and continue to add towards your investments. And I'm actually gonna show you in my example, how I'm gonna set it up for my kid who's about to be born, hopefully if all goes well next week. So that way you can also see how you can automate those investment plans for your children because maybe those you want to do more passively while maybe your own investments you want to do more actively log into other brokers and what have you so whatever works for you here is how you're going to do it right so obviously first thing you need an interactive brokers account to get started and if you want to check it out for yourself and use my link down in the description below it helps out the channel a lot without any additional cost to you and then basically i also have a number of videos that show you how to set it up but once you approved and up and running you're going to be greeted with the dashboard over here. You may not have any holdings in the beginning. Obviously, then you want to deposit some money. So you have funds over there to invest. And you see over here my own personal account. But then recently in another YouTube video that I did, I showed you how you can set up a separate account for your children. Here, I call it child one. And as somebody commented in the videos, no, that's not the name of the child. We do have a more creative name for him, but I'm not going to reveal it just yet. We haven't actually shared it yet. So yeah, I'll keep it for demonstration purposes. Child one, maybe you have four or five kids. <laughs> Numbering might actually be an easier way for you, but whatever floats your boat. And from here, it's actually very straightforward. What you want to do is go ahead, click on trade over here and then navigate to recurring investments. Pretty self-explanatory, but yeah, with all the other options, it might get watered down a little bit. So click on that and then it opens up that interface where you can set up your recurring buys. And again, you only do that once, right? Even the first time you say, oh my God, it's a bit tricky. Actually, it's not. And once it's set up, that's it. So then you want to go ahead, click on create recurring investments. And by the way, you see even here, should expired and canceled. So maybe in the past, you set up already some that you canceled for whatever reason. You want to resume. You just can click on that and show them and re-enable them basically. But let's start from scratch with a clean slate over here. Click on create recurring investments. And I should have mentioned that before, but you see right now I'm already setting up for this specific account. Unfortunately, they don't show you the alias name. Either you remember those numbers or actually you should go back to recurring investments and then make sure when you can select the account, you select the correct account. Now, if you only have one account, then obviously you don't have to select anything, but maybe you want to set it up for your kid or your wife or another child, whatever it is, right? So make sure you first select it. So in this case, I want to set up for child one, right? So let's select that and that switches around the account for which we're setting up the recurring buy. So once again, if you only have one account, don't worry about it. That will be the default account. But if you do have different ones, make sure you select the correct one. And yep, set up, create recurring investments. Right, and first off, obviously we wanna say what we wanna be buying, right, the asset. So ideally you wanna do your research already beforehand so that you know what you wanna be buying because here you can only input the symbol, right? So if you still think what to buy or what not, well then watch some other videos, do your own homework, right? So you already come into here knowing what is the ticker symbol for the stock or ETF that you want to be buying. In my case, obviously, I spoke a lot about it on my channel. I do like monthly portfolio updates where I talk about what I'm buying, why I'm buying it, and so forth. So I'm not going to go into too much here. I'm just going to show you the how, not the why. So in this case, I want to be buying S&P 500 ETF for my son for the next you know, few years in the future. Um, again, I'm not here to discuss why I'm doing this. I have my reasons and I spoke about this in other videos. Feel free to type in the comments. Some of you may want to go with an all world ETF. There's no right or wrong. I'm definitely not going to buy individual shares or even Bitcoin. Yes, maybe the upside could be higher, but here I really want to invest very conservatively to grow the wealth, you know, slowly, but surely over time. I don't want to have huge volatility swings 
in his portfolio, right? So when he's 18, 20, whatever, you know, he has a predictable portfolio. So we can use those funds for whatever it has to, for his college funds or starting a business, whatever it will be, right? A lot of things can happen. So yeah, in my case, I know I want to go ahead and dollar cost average into an S&P 500 ETF. So personally, I'm buying the SPY 5 ETF, which is an S&P 500 ETF in dollars on the London Stock Exchange, which is distributing. So it pays me out a quarterly dividend. However, as I want to automate as much as possible here, and I want to have to think about logging in and reinvesting in dividends when they pay to me on a quarterly basis for my son, right? I actually want to buy an accumulating ETF. That way, I don't have to think about dividends. So that way, the ETF provider, instead of paying out the dividends, will take those dividends and automatically buy more shares of it. So that way, you're holding continues to accumulate over time without you having to, you know, log in quarterly and remember to invest the incremental dividend that you got there. So I think that's the easiest way if you really want to set and forget and automate as much as possible, which I always recommend for most people. So in this case, I would like to buy the SPYL. Unfortunately, as you can see right now, they're not listed in the London Stock Exchange. They have a USD version in Switzerland, but somehow, I don't know why I prefer buying things in London. So in this case, I will go with a slightly more expensive, but also very, very popular uh, Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, which is this one over here, the VUAA, Vanguard S&P 500 usage ETF accumulating. So the expense ratio slightly more expensive, 0.07%, which is not ideal, but at the same time, it's accumulating. It's one of the biggest fund size out there. So again, I really want to invest, you know, conservatively, right? Yes, for myself, I want to optimize and move in and out of position maybe here and there, but here I really want to build a strong foundation of a portfolio. So even a slightly high percentage in the long term might actually be better than going with the distributing one where I received the dividend, then I forgot to log in and reinvest it. And that way it doesn't compound as fast as it could if the dividends were automatically reinvested. So I think in my case, it will be the better choice. But again, you have to do your own homework. This is not investing advice. Right, so then I'm going to choose the one on the London Stock Exchange. Again, you know, it would be nicer if they had little logos, little explanation of what it is. If you're logging in the first time, these initials are a little bit overwhelming for sure. Select it, and you can see over here what I have selected as my asset. Unfortunately, you cannot select multiple assets, right? For example, on Trading 2 on 2, you can set up pies where you can have you know, some stocks, some ETFs in there. You build almost your own ETF. Here, you have to set up one by one. So I can't just add another stock or ETF to that. So I dollar cost average into different ones, I would have to do that order first and then set up another recurring buy if I want to do also dollar cost average maybe into some stocks or another ETF, whatever it will be, right? So yeah, just keep that in mind. You have to do that one by one. You can't do it all in one go. Right, next we're going to set up a start date. In my case, I wanted to trigger the order actually today, but as you can see, it's not possible to do on the same day, so it can only be triggered tomorrow. But actually I want to do it on the 15th. For me, 15th just works really well because usually I do a bank transfer into interactive brokers on the 1st and then it might take maybe one day, maybe two days. So I make sure I have the money already in there by the time the 15th comes around, the money will be deposited in my interactive brokers account. So then obviously you're going to say how much money you want to be investing and buying that asset, right? So again, that's up to you. I cannot tell you what to do. In my case, I want to start things off with $250 per month. And then obviously you want to say the interval, right? You want to invest daily, weekly, monthly, whatever it is, you have to choose what works for you. In my case, I want to go with monthly. Now, technically, I could also stick with weekly, but keep in mind on interactive brokers, even though the fees and commissions are very low, they still are there, right? So if I was, you know, buying every week, you know, the commissions would start eating into the amount because the amount is not the highest amount, right? Obviously, I'm going to increase that over time. But for now, that's the amount. So if I pay, you know, a couple of dollars over here in commission every week, that would eat into the overall returns. So that's why I want to minimize those commissions on a monthly basis. And yeah, you can set it up, you know, when it ends. But in my case, for now, I don't want to have an end date in mind because yeah, I'm just going to let it grow normally until 18. But hey, Life happens, right? Who knows? And maybe it will be until 21 if he still studies or whatever. Life happens, right? I'm obviously going to keep an eye on that. I won't forget about this account. Nicely integrated with your overall interactive brokers account. So I do see it every time I log in. But for now, I just want to set and forget it and not have it automatically stop after a while because that's the whole point of compounding to grow your money and investments over time. So if you're happy with this, go ahead, click on continue over here. And from here, you're going to get a quick confirmation of what you set up, what you're going to buy, the asset, of course, the symbol, make sure it's all correct from when it starts the first time it triggers, no end date, the amount, and when it's going to be triggered. So every single you know, month on the 15th, first time will be September, next time 15th October, November, and so on and so forth. And then they also explain a few things here, how it all works. You obviously you have to make sure you have enough money in your respective account. That doesn't mean your own account. If you only have one account, yes, it's your own account. But in case you set it up for your kid, you have to have money in your kid's account or partner's account, whatever account you set it up. These are separate accounts, right? So it cannot take the cash from your own account to invest it in another account. So you have to make sure you deposit into that account. They also have different deposit details. 
So when you send your bank transfer, make sure you send it to the correct amount. Very important because if you don't send it, then of course, as soon as there's no more money in that account, they will stop the purchasing order and that order will be canceled and it will not be triggered anymore. So that's very important. And also in my case, I set it up on every 15th of the month, right? Some months that will be a weekend or public holiday. In this case, it says over here, those orders will be triggered on the next market open day. So, you know, if that's on a Sunday, then obviously they will trigger the order on the 16th on a Monday, right? So that's just something to keep in mind there. And of course, the charges and commissions will be the same as they always are, whether you do it manually or recurring. And if you're happy with this, which I am, I'm going to click over here on save investment and boom, that's as simple as it is. Now it has been set up and that's pretty much all there is to it. And here you can see all your various recurring investments. You have to set them up one by one so you can see very easily what it is right now. If I wanted to add some other investments, maybe some shares in Google, Amazon, whatever, I could set up another one of those buys and maybe that one I want to do for one year, two years. So once you get it, it's actually very easy to set up and you can really see with a nice overview all the various you know, ongoing recurring investments that you have on your account or any other account that are falling under your management. So that's really the easiest way of passively investing, not to have to think about it. Maybe you do it for your own account, maybe for a kid's account, whatever it is, right? If you do it for your own account, like in the case of my wife, like literally we set it up and she never has to log in into that platform anymore, right? It doesn't give her a headache. The only thing you have to remember is to go to whatever bank you use and make sure you set up the right deposits on a regular basis into interactive brokers, right? So you always have enough money and funds sitting over there. Right now, the interest you get on interactive brokers isn't that high so i wouldn't send a huge amount over there unless you're being charged a lot of money for a bank transfer into interactive brokers but usually it doesn't really cost that much depends on your bank of course but if you set up a monthly transfer in this case from your bank account whatever bank you use to interactive brokers let's say in my example on the first of every month right then you know even if it takes two three days to arrive which usually doesn't it's faster but let's say in a worst case scenario i'm going to be sure latest 15th of the month it will be there and ready to be invested as we just set it up on the recurring investment strategy so that's really honestly the easiest way how you can automate and grow your own portfolio or of course for your kid wife or any other family member for that matter and of course if for whatever reason you ever wanted to cancel it you can just go back into trade over here recurring investments and then we go back to the overview of all the investments that we have currently on recurring basis and then you can either go into modify to change any of the settings over here maybe the amount or the day whatever works better for you you can see the history all the buys that has been triggered automatically or you can of course very easily cancel it if for whatever reason you do want to cancel it. But why I don't want to cancel it and why I actually set it up in the first place is of course of the beloved compound growth that we see over time. And that's why exactly we want to set it up for our children because you can easily give them a head start. I link to the compound growth calculator in the description down below so you can run your own numbers. But just an example, I set up over here right now myself, US dollars, that's what I'm investing right now. I'm starting with zero, right? I'm starting from basically a new account for the kid, then monthly contribution, $250, expected return, and the S&P returned anywhere from 8 to 10 percent over the last 30 years so let's go again a bit more conservatively with eight percent not playing any additional deposit increase even though i will definitely do that over time you know five years or ten years from now 250 dollars is pretty much nothing right that's just inflation how it works so definitely i'm going to increase it but just for the sake of the exercise let me show you how that number turns out of course investment period 18 years Again, maybe it's going to be 21 years, 22 years. You know, we'll have to see. So many things will happen, right? If he needs it for the college, great. If he needs it for a business when he's 23, great. Whatever it is, right? Obviously, it's unlikely you're going to write a big fat check on the 18th birthday and give him all the amount. But ultimately, that's also your choice. You just have the optionality, which is great. And that rather small amount, when you can think about it, over time, still would turn into over $120,000 or around 100,000 euros. That's a nice starting cushion, right? If in 18 years, all of a sudden you need that money, well, you have to maybe sell some of your shares or whatever it is. Right? That's much more difficult than if you already have the money completely set aside and don't consider it your own, but really as an investment into your children. And that's the beauty of it, the compound growth, right? From your own investments, it would only be $54,000. The main growth came from the compounding $66,000. So that's why we set it up in the first place. Again, either for your kids or for yourself, the principle is the same. And that's why I'm a big, big fan of automating investments, take out the emotions. So it's done no matter what, whether the markets are up, whether the markets are down, you take out the emotional aspect of it. And you just get it done every single day, week, months, however you set it up. If you still have any questions about any of the things I spoke about today, pop them in the comments down below. Happy to hear from you. Next up, check out this video over here. As always, thanks all for watching. Stay healthy, get wealthy, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.